have to remember not to make weird faces because <laughs> that's forever the face that ends up. Man, that's the quickest we've ever gotten to 247 people in a live. It's because we have the man, the myth, the legend, Shayway Vlogs. What's going on, everybody? How are you? Hello. Hope everybody's well. Alex, Matt, good evening. Adam. Adam, wonderful. Always on time. We're punctual. <clears throat> if you're not five minutes early, you're ten minutes late. Or Jeremy's just super late and we have to cancel. Those are, no. There's no in between. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Congratulations to Courtney, too. That's, uh, that's team effort right there. I think we were willing to give up one of our four kids to get a big card. And so... I talked to him today, though, so he's congratulating you because he already congratulated you. Oh, all right. <laughs> This should be fun. I'm in a, uh, I'm a big fa fan of Shay, and so um, I'm looking forward to letting that guy run wild and speak his mind. Because actually, I have a lot in common with Shay. So much. And, it's uh, so funny. The things that Shay says like out loud, I'm like, Jeremy says that to me all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, they agree. <laughs> so, I'll give like another 30 seconds, and then... Yeah. Hope everybody's doing good post-national. I'm, so, I'm alive. I thought... There was a quick minute that I thought I was going to die. Shay is a real one, man. Absolutely. Shay is a real one. All right, if you want to, let's get this started. We're just going to wait for uh, <clears throat> Shay to Yeah, so anybody start. doesn't know, you live under a rock. Shay Way Vlogs is uh, somebody we've actually, probably the first person in the hobby that we were truly uh, super fans of. And it was a combination of like the cool cards and was just somebody who was, oh, let's add them in. It was just somebody who was always authentically themselves. And so I feel like, uh, oh my goodness. I just can't deal with this too much handsome here. There's a lot of, lot of damn I handsome. I because you guys are too attractive. I can't deal with it. <laughs> hey, what's good, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, you can hear me clear. Uh, A crystal clear, man. I'm glad you got the HD. You've got the, the strong internet for tonight. I'm loving it. Yeah, I, I upgraded my internet for tonight. <laughs> so anybody, like, if you don't know who Shay is, uh, you're in for a treat tonight because he truly is somebody who we find relatable because he's authentic, he's himself, and in our opinion, he doesn't try to be something that he's not. And whether, whether you like, agree, disagree with what he has to say, we all respect the hell out of the fact that you're who you are. You wear your heart on your sleeve, man. And I look back, and we've been chatting for over a few years now. We bought some cards from you back in the day. And routinely it was, hey, Shay, man, please keep being yourself. You, you know, you're talking about, like, maybe you're not getting the love that you deserve or people are treating you another way or they're dogging you. And, like, I'm, I'm glad that you haven't changed who you are and i find it very refreshing because as corporate money comes into this place there's a lot of people who are changing it up or trying to be different or acting different and so i'm just i'm you know it's an honor to chat with you man it's i'm glad that you're jumping on i'm literally gonna say one thing and then i'm not gonna say anything else because i just want to hear what you have to say about everything but hmm, i listened to your uh or i watched your story last night about like not getting like feeling like you didn't get invited to parties and stuff we like had a get together and it was just like some of our friends and we totally would have invited you but we thought you were too cool and you would come so i was thinking that you probably didn't get invited just because everybody's like oh he's invited to everything he won't come to our thing yeah yeah you're big time with people dude <laughs> uh, first uh great uh, amazing um uh, introduction uh thank you for that appreciate it um uh, thank you for having me on your hobby school night. Uh, it's funny, like, I think the first time I met you guys was actually at the last national. I was standing online, I think, ordering food or something. Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, you are that, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, so, like, look, a year later, here we are, right? So, uh, but, 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 yeah, um, thank you for having me on. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I navigate the hobby, um. Uh, in, my, in my own way and just uh, you know uh, I treat it as a hobby first that's why maybe you get a lot of this uh, authenticity uh, as you say because it, it, it's a hobby first uh, and you know and I know the numbers could be big and corporate money and all that stuff but um, I just don't care <laughs> it's just fun and I'm gonna enjoy this and that's how I'm kind of navigating but I'm thank you for seeing for uh, what it is no, I, you know, I think that that's one thing that we're big into because there's a lot of people that aren't 
walking around with seven figure cards, six figure cards, hell, even five figure cards. There's a lot of people that are playing in a different sandbox. And one thing that we're big into, it's like you can participate in this hobby however you want and still have fun. And so it's been awesome to watch you go through and like pick up a badass card. And when you and Putnam were doing your pod, it was always, I always loved that you would talk about it. Like the, the feeling that you would get when you were talking about acquiring the gold kaboom and then reaching out to your network, asking for advice and figuring out how you're going to do this. And I never quite understood like why you would get any backlash. Cause to me, that was a badass card. It was a card that you liked. It was a card that you wanted. And instead of giving somebody flack, man, why not give somebody their flowers and say, you know, congratulations. That's a badass card. Oh, and I think that you might have been correct on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny you, you you mentioned that. You know, it's um, you know sometimes there's there's old sayings. You know, I mean, I'm not the best with the old lingo's and sayings, but like sometimes you look crazy for being so early uh, on on something, and those people they go through you know all the the backlash, all that you know of, of choosing and picking uh, cards. Uh, and, and, you know, like, my only thing with that uh, situation is, I mean, this is a card that's, like, unique and very special enough, and it has such a big following on its own. I kind of just got into the spotlight on a little bit of a bigger a deal. And I don't know, a lot of people didn't, you know, they had to, they had their own opinions. Uh, but now it, it is getting, like, um, the market, the market speaks not for me, for everybody, because that's that's the market is the market. You can't fight the trend. It is what it is. So like, you know, I'll just let the market prices, I guess, uh, in a way, uh, speak for itself with my, you know, kaboom gold theory thesis, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, you know that was awesome because then you turned it into doing an article on basketball card fanatic, which was awesome. The live with Adam was good, except for the internet kept like blocking one of you out. But it was it was truly awesome, and then you were you were slaying in those magazines, and it was a, it was a real cool read. Like I was a, a student in school, and if I didn't like what I was reading, I struggled to read. I lost interest real quick, and my head was elsewhere. Now I'm reading articles about a dude who I think is cool, talking about a, a dope card, uh, it just made awesome. Like our kids were picking up reading. Our kids are like they have cell phones, TikTok, all that stuff. They're not trying to read, and then they're like, oh, that's. That's Shay. That's that's Shay. That's the guy. He does the oh, the pizza review. That's Shay. I'm gonna read that. That's so cool. Wow, that's uh, that's 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 crazy. It's humbling to hear that. But uh, but yeah, that, that, it's crazy. I, I I picked that up in in trying to get the LeBron gold kaboom, which I know Cardporn posted it one time. Every single card you can imagine is gonna be at the national. I, I didn't see the LeBron gold kaboom. Is it uh, any grade? Um. So like that's it, that card became so unreachable because it's in such diamond hands, and you know I talked to a few owners. They're like, dude, they're just not interested in in, in dealing. Like you know, it's almost irreplaceable. So I'm like, you know what? I I gave up uh, in in that chase, unless something happens in the future. But, so for anybody who doesn't know, how did you get into collecting? I've heard the story a couple times, but if you want to give everybody the elevator pitch of having the cards, not understanding what they're worth, and then going back. Like, if you want to tell your story, I'd appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, um, origin, 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 uh, Panini origin story. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, basically, um, I got exposed to sports cards uh, when I was in seventh, sixth, seventh grade, so maybe 12, 13 years old. Um, yeah, there was a card shop uh, on, on my way to school every day. I was watching sports. Uh, I saw posters of like Kobe Bryant and stuff um, um, in uh, Stanley Street in Astoria, Queens, New York City. Um, I just walked in, in inside one day, saw cards, saw different values of different cards, different price, and kind of like some cards just look cooler. They were just more expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was I was young. You know, I was like, okay, why is this that much now? Okay, so it kind of like brought me to like, and I was a numbers math guy. Um, that, that's what I enjoyed. So then that's how it kind of brought me into that. I ripped open a, what uh, upper deck black diamond, uh, try and chase that quad diamond Jordan, uh, you know, the triple and the quads. Um, never hit anything crazy, but that was like uh, my pack. There were other packs that were like credentials that were so expensive. It was like seven, ten dollars. It was like ridiculous, you know, like there's no way I could afford that. 
So that's when I first got um, into kind of the hobby, my first experience. Um, I actually met a few kids in my school that actually had binders and stuff. I was like, okay, it's a little community. All right, cool. I'm not the only one. So I was like, okay, cool. It's a thing. You know, sleep cards are a thing. So then fast forward uh, to when I was uh, basically uh, 2012. I was maybe in my early 20s. Um, I had basically a internet um, online drop shipping business. And I was just like on eBay. And I was like just just checking sports cards, see what's up. Like some of like the stuff that I wanted, like just put in Michael Jordan auto, you know, see what's going on. And some like random cards I remember at the sports card uh, shop uh, 10, 20, what, 10 years ago before, um, those prices from what I remember was so much more intense. And I was like, oh wow, people are still into this shit. Like, it's a big deal. Like, it's just, wow, it's a thing. And these were getting a lot more real number, like where it's like a week's paycheck, not like, you know, 2012. So I, I went a little binge, you know what I mean? Going a little nuts on the internet. And uh, so I bought maybe like, what, ten to $12,000 worth of cards in a span of, <laughs> a span of like three to six months. I'll start out only buying graded, scared as hell of raw. I want to know what I got. Beckett was big. I was into the BGS labs because I like the subgrades and all that good stuff. Uh, times have changed, obviously. But um, but yeah, I only bought graded cards, and the most expensive card I bought um 2012 was this Michael Jordan. By the way, congratulations on your uh, Michael Jordan. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Card, like amazing. Uh, like trust me, it's 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 a it's a feeling you'll never forget this. No matter what happens to you guys in the future, you gotta remember this situation because I know my first time buying one. So. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, so I, I, it was a giant Jordan Final Floor Auto. I, it was like I paid twelve or fourteen hundred dollars. Scared out of my mind. Like at that time, it was a lot. Um, long story short, on that one, I just recently sold that card. Um, like twelve years later, you know, the return was like I think ten to fifteen x. So, you know, the That's big awesome. back then. Crazy. But, but that goes to like collecting what you like and all that stuff. Like I always thought that those cards were cool back then. They're Still cool. When I say cool, it's like I mean like importance. It's an autograph. It's Michael Jordan. You know, like the base. That's what I meant. Like you know, buying like good quality, high nice things. That you know. So that that that's how I approached the hobby since back then. That's how I approach the hobby now. Even the last few years. Um. Uh, yeah. And maybe that's where I I, I kind of navigate the hobby. Um. That's I guess my origin story mixed with how I think. When you when you talk about how the hobby was then and how it is now. In the, like, the, we can all agree, anyone who's been collecting for any amount of time, the last, like, two years has been sort of crazy. So how does how does the, this year feel? Not, like, how is it, but how does the, the hobby feel to you this year versus, like, last year? God, um, you know, you know, you're a straight shooter. Um, definitely a little bit more cautious, nervous. I don't want to be Debbie Downer. But you know we got we gotta we gotta see what's going on. I like just from reading the markets, um, like uh, there's a few perceptions. We all know you know the base cards died out. Like it's old news. Like, you know, off pump. Uh, okay, that, no, no mentioning of names. Sorry, but you know the whole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Like, this is a safe fun. space, bro. This is a safe space. Let it out. We all, we all had fun with those cards back in the day. Yeah, now, yeah. And great. kids love them now. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story. This is hobby history, guys. You know what I mean? Like, you remember those days when we were doing that, grading all those, you know, base cards? Mm -hmm. I, like, made a TikTok about it. Like, like, uh -oh. <laughs> about, like, being old and being, like, back in 2020, people were selling base cards for, like, thousands of dollars. <laughs> yep, because it's the true one. It's the, that's the base one. That's the classic one. That's the main card. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, But, yeah, th since those days uh, are, are gone, but now, like, and then, Think that just just because you bought you buy like a rare card that's expensive, don't think that you're gonna either it's gonna hold value, or even you're gonna make money, um because, uh to be very very frank you know a lot like recently, I had to I've been consolidating obviously and you know like getting some of these really like more exotic rare cards, um the other bigger cards that. I had, I owned rather, and you know, you think that it's gonna hold or do well. Um, I've definitely taken some nice, nice L's, uh, uh, you know. And this last year was easy going. We all like, you know, it, but this year is a, a definitely a lot more harder. And to be honest, it's like, dude, it's not even fun anymore. 
like, dude, like, you know what I mean? You're taking 10, 15, 20 K losses on a card, you know, like it happened a, a, a couple of times, like, like five figure losses. And it's like, dude, this is like not fun. Like what the hell is going on? <laughs> okay. Yeah. The hobby's cool. Great. You know, but like deep down inside, it's like, this is painful. So like, that's what I kind of re am realizing. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's like the market's definitely uh, more challenging, more tougher, but there's always opportunities on, on the bright side. If anybody's watching, like, and I'm talking about price points for all different price points, uh, sectors and, and, and things like that. It's not just, there's always an opportunity. There's so many undiscovered cards out there, guys. Um, it, it takes research, passion, hours, because you're doing this without getting paid. <laughs> right you're doing it because you love it. and and then if you put in the work you can, you can definitely find great interesting opportunities still today that can be way more bigger deal uh in, in the future well I, I found it like fascinating i heard you on another pod and you were talking about like the the partnership with empire and i think there was like a maybe a red refractor numbered out of five there was a card that you openly talked about taking an l on and i found that to be very refreshing because oftentimes you turn on social media and you see all these big accounts and all they're showing are these cards. And it's like, man, how do they hit on every single card? In reality, we're over here trying to be 70, 30, 60, 40, and just try to win a little bit more than you lose. So I, I, I want to compliment you on that. But also, you have seen back in the day, it was a lot of basketball. And now you've shifted. And is that a result of you like the cards? You found an arbitrage opportunity? You're just trying to be proactive and find find what's next before somebody else did? How did that play go? Because it was all like 90s basketball and early 2000s when I first met you. Uh, excellent question. So yeah, I'm uh, my my bread and butter. What I really enjoy is 90s basketball. It's the era I grew up on. You know what I mean? Like there's so many great things to say about that sector. But what's funny to be, to be very, very blunt is, you know how social media, like there are cards before you just imagined in your head look like but you can see a photo of it like this is social media ish before the hobby was a big thing that like was always exciting like you know 97 credentials jordan like you know what i mean like just just random cards like you know you've seen other players but you've never seen the actual card that you want in, in, in photos of it social media things always in front of your face you slowly kind of get numb to it so like uh, I'm not saying I lost interest, but it was, I was being too like blindsided with just like constantly seeing the same cool, cool cards. <laughs> you know, no disrespect, they're, they're making beautiful cards, but you just see, I just see a lot of it. Uh, so then I, I was like, you know, watch soccer with my family. You know, that's how I got into kind of like you know soccer cards, and then and then like I started digging more into it. I saw that there was a good challenge, and part of the hobby is the chase. Um, part that I, I personally, like many people, like you guys, like the chase, the thrill, the hunt. And what's interesting about soccer in America and the collector base, I'm starting to talk, going to shows and meeting a lot of these soccer collectors, UFC collectors, um, F1 uh, collectors, not just flippers, but like actual genuine people that really enjoy this shit and are spending real, real money buying some of these very, very, very unique cards. And this is more international uh, type market. Obviously, you know, international. <laughs> Not like that. I was born. Uh, I we got international. Yeah. <laughs> I was all freaking a little off. But, but, yeah. <laughs> you sound like a man of mystery. You're like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so with that being said, and then like I'm realizing that a lot of these collectors that are, are on these soccer cards, for example, or even yeah, let's stick to soccer. They've gone into the cards so like a while back right four or five years ago they introduced cards like 100 300 bucks but they're worth like 15 20 grand at which i am fine in pain it's just the market that's you gotta respect it that's just what it's worth so a lot of these guys and a lot of these guys they're like not hidden but they're kind of like all around the world and they got these they got into these soccer cards because they actually enjoyed that sport that's they didn't watch basketball and they're like in norway in france you know what I mean? In some places in Philip, like all around the world. So like that also like got me a lot more interested and excited and then mixed with the hunt and then finding out some of the crazy rare cards in a random country. Okay, I got to get that. I need blah, blah, blah. So like, hey, it just makes it fun. It's just exciting. So that's, that's why I got into those. Do you ever stop and reflect? Like you've picked up some badass cards. 
There is no denying that. You got the Ronaldo, the Messi. But then when I think about it, the cards are awesome, but I think about what went into it because you did a really good job of documenting what was going on. So I know you were at the Miami Grand Prix. I was in Las Vegas watching the race and then also watching you at Instagram. Then next thing I know, like at some point you're out West picking out Ronaldo out in some island, I don't know, Hawaii or something like that. Then you're in Europe and France picking up these cards. So like the card was the vehicle that got you there, but now you're having all these real life experiences and these memories that you'll take with you to the grave. Do you ever just stop and think about like, holy shit, if it wasn't for cardboard, I may not have done, gone on these crazy adventures. Dude, yeah, man. Uh, I just realized it's it's only August now. It's not even the year. It's not even over. Exactly. I'm just being so like, holy shit. Like, we still have like five le- five months left, right? And I feel like this year has been already very intense um, in, with the pickups, the traveling. Like, whoa, like, this, I should just I should just chill out for a little bit. I should be doing that, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, the, yeah, I, I, I do realize, like, damn. Yeah, and that's why, like, when I say I really love the hobby, it's just some, like, like I'm getting exposed to meeting people that even like us, this conversation right now, I'm enjoying it. You know, and you're like complete strangers off the internet, I met. And here we are doing a live, talking about cardboard. Like, what? It's, it's, it's like, crazy. The last years when, like, last couple years, and we've collected for a long time, but we, you know, like everybody, when, like, COVID happened and you're, like, stuck at your house, what else do you have to do? You know, you go online and we, we collect cards. We're like, well, let's put some of them online and see if we can meet other people that like cards and we can trade or do whatever. And it has, I, I would say that it has changed our life. Like we have done things and gone places and met people that if it weren't for cards specifically, wouldn't have happened. would never have happened. So it's like, cards have gone beyond just a hobby for a lot of us it's like it it affects your whole life so it's crazy to think that like these little tiny pieces of cardboard with pictures of men on them and women and animals and all sorts of things um (laughs) have become such a huge part of so many people's lives so and, and i think in the last couple of years it's even expanded outside of that so we brought you on to kind of talk about the national because a lot of people didn't get to go and um a lot of us have seen a change from like last year to this year and i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the national last year for you and how you felt like that went um and then we'll we'll compare it to this year yeah for sure so last year's national was the first ever you know uh it was a hiatus with the, with the national it's the post pandemic national so like the buzz was completely different than this year. It was like, holy shit, finally the first big event. Everybody's coming together post pandemic. Um, I I was set up at that time. I was I was never even a dealer at that time, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, but it was like exciting just meeting, just meeting the social guys. So that's literally what I did. But I was in, involved in more parties, you know, compared to uh, this year. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the expectation. It was fun level factor. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you enjoyed that. I was just—I was gonna bust balls a little bit. Uh, that's a whole different. No, I love those guys. They, 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 you know, we're, we're really cool. Um, so l- last year it was mostly uh, just a social thing, you know, and the deals. Like I did one deal, like I consolidated into like one crazy card. Um, uh, that that was it last year. The the fun factor was really really high. Stress level low last year fast forward to this year um i was a dealer for uh at the national for the first time we got uh t- some table space shout out to uh eminent miracle uh he hooked it up um badass I think i'm cool this guy's another level of just like just badass cool baller like dude i'm coming here i don't gotta sell shit i'm just chilling i'm like and he has crazy cars like oh, this guy's way too cool like i gotta work let me get some table space <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so we we uh we set up there you know it was like a lot of you know action and stuff and and to be quite frank um i was um my, my table was right underneath the air condition so um i got a little chilly everybody had the little hoodies on uh, i decided to buy the hoodie on the second day and i wasn't feeling like the best so like 
maybe uh, I wouldn't say antisocial, but I just feel rather I wasn't feeling the absolute bad. By the way, no, no COVID. Calm down, everybody. I know there's a COVID super spreader. Um, but uh, that that was the the experience uh, of this national. It was more like um, serious, more like deals happening. So the vibe was completely different compared to last year. It was all fun, bubbly, yada yada. You know, La La Land. This year was like a little bit more serious. So, and to be to be quite frank, I'd rather choose the previous national. Which I well, coming off of last year's national, there was a lot going on. You had like the media badge. It seemed like everywhere I went, you were on either somebody's pod, you were on somebody's live stream, you were on Twitter. It was this or that. I'm sure as a human being, you had some sort of expectation coming into this year's national. Did it meet, exceed, or fall short of what you were expecting? Because as I listened to you last night, speak candidly about your thoughts and opinions, I reflected and I was like, actually, where was Shay? Why wasn't Shay there? I think we passed you one time. I think it was at the Trop Saturday night on a soccer trade night, if that's where that was at. I was at the soccer trade night. Yeah. Soccer trade night. Um, what, what was the, the question? <laughs> so do, do, did you expect bigger or to be treated differently coming into this national, for better or worse? Did you yeah, think yeah. that this national experience was going to be different? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the vibes were going to continue from last year. And then I thought maybe it was going to be more intense. Uh, but it was kind of like the opposite, maybe. Um, but I, I think maybe, uh, I personally think now, like looking back, like because I was set up as a dealer, like responsibilities were like more higher. These are expensive cars. These are like, got to be a little bit more focused. Yeah. Choosing all the time. So like if I didn't have a table, for example, last year, I was like just walking the floor. I think, for example, I'd have a lot more fun, I guess, in social type because you got to bump into people. You got to talk what's going on. One, you know, do some dumb, not dumb, like some content, something, you know, you'll do something fun. And then, you know, it leads to, hey, what's going on later? Hey, I'm, you know, like, you know, social. So I guess that's what kind of things you, you know, you can't, you can't have it all, I guess, right? You can't have your cake and eat it of being a dealer and that whole lifestyle. But some people have that, so good for them. I can feel like I can totally understand what you're saying because when we decided to buy that Jordan, like the second day, well, the first day we were set up to do a live. And then the second day we decided we we're going to like make the deal for that Jordan and then it, it went from like, oh, this is going to be fun social time to strictly business. And there wasn't time to go visit. There wasn't time to go, you know, do things. There wasn't time to like, you know, mess around and go hang out at like, you know, our friends booths and see what, they, what parties they were going to. It was like, we're working. And so I feel like this year's national for us specifically. And it sounds like you too was more of like a working event than uh hey let's go have a party event and and i think a lot of people as they grow in the hobby and their longevity becomes like we're not going like you've been here for a long time but like the social aspect and the influencer aspect the longer you're in it the more it, it, it is consuming so it's not always just like hey i'm here to like pop in and do interviews with everybody and be a you know a face I have work to do and that that does like sometimes put a damper on the, the party time yeah yeah so that, that's why like i i know a lot of like well-known people on the highway they balance that very well because they've been at it um you just in generally speaking like we can just throw out the hobby thing. Sarah Layton just said right here the national is a very different experience when you're set up yeah 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 100 percent um yeah yeah She's right. So that's literally what happened. So with the whole the rant thing, you know, I ain't invited to any parties. I know I sound so like extra. No. But, oh, people understand where I'm coming. I guess yeah. I'm because out. There's a lot of people that are feeling the way that you're feeling. Yeah. That yeah. just don't, don't maybe broadcast it. And the thing yeah. is, is we all go to the national to see each other and right. to, because we all talk online every day and we're selling on eBay and, you know, this is the one time of the year where we all get together and hang out with the people in real life. So I think that you just put like words to something that lots of people feel all the time. And that to me, like there's no 
that's exactly how people feel. Yeah, I've got a lot of uh, responses to every time I do one of these things. Um, surprising a lot of people. Uh, one time I talked about like how the pandemic like brought social anxiety uh, to me uh, personally. Um, I, I, here's another crazy thing. Like I know it sounds like oh, Mr. Social, Mr. Party, but in, in reality, it's like there there is social uh, anxiety that a lot of people actually go through uh, in the hobby. One one gentleman, call me gentleman, one person in the hobby, <laughs> so fresh. Or well, one one person had reached out. He was like a school teacher, and uh, he used to give these auditorium speeches and stuff. And now post pandemic, he's like a nervous wreck. <laughs> you know, it's not funny. But um, yeah, a lot of people go through similar things and, you know, it, it's cool just talking about it. You know, not everybody's going to agree with like some of your views. You know, some people hated my Paris uh, trip uh, when I was vlogging. You're yeah. jealous. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. So, like, if they're hating it, that was awesome. It was fun so, to watch. You eat pizza. We know what lamb chops. Just show the damn card. And I was like, dude, it's a theatrics. It's a hobby, man. Come on. You know, have a little fun. You know, I'll try so like they like you know they called me out. I was like, wow, damn, I had no idea. Like somebody was actually. Not I was living vicariously through you. So. <laughs> it wouldn't have been fun if you just dropped the card. It was like, okay, what the hell is he getting next? You go back and he's he's hyping this up. This funny. is gonna be a thing. Let's it was, check it out. If people don't have showmanship anymore, they're just lame. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> like okay, no, like okay, FedEx mail days are amazing, you know, but this is a different type of tripping mail. Yes. For long. Yes. I like I, I I aspire to travel to Paris to do a deal for a car. I'm gonna tell you, like that is like bucket list things for me. <laughs> Yo, look, I believe in like uh, getting what you, your statement and all that, manifesting it out. Like this is the internet; it's gonna be alive forever. You'll be surprised. Who knows what you guys are gonna be capable of? I don't know. You'll, you you may see yourself in a random weird situation. Like, you're going to be telling, you know, like, oh, my God, we, we got to, the kids have to stay back. We got to pack our shit. We got to get, please vlog it. Please show it off. Because <laughs> uh, I want to see it. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You can't do a mail day because you probably did the most epic mail day in hobby history yeah, you when you got yourself. a bunch of PSA cards that didn't even belong to you. <laughs> so you've already done that. Right. So the next time you pick up a damn card, it better be like in a fucking space shuttle, you know, <laughs> floating around in space doing a deal. You know what I mean? Of doing course. a deal with Bezos or something. I don't know. I like got on his penis ship in outer space. Yeah. <laughs> for, for outer space. This deal is out of this world, guys. So, <laughs> yes. He's already marketing it. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I oh. love it. So... I, when you like think about do you go to a lot of card shows or is it just like i know you just said that you're doing uh why don't you talk a little bit about the next show you're doing because i saw yeah, that yeah so actually i'll, I'll be in la the Bird sports card show. my first time in la um which is kind of like surprising even i'm like i've never been to la i've never been to california to be honest so like i'm definitely excited about that um we got we got a table there I'll be there Thursday, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, first time. I, I you know, I definitely, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to make that into a trip. Uh, I'm staying after that. Uh, you know, I want to see the Hollywood sign, you know, the Walk of Stars, and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, like, I'm, I'm really excited. So, I'll be in L.A. if anybody is from Los Angeles. Um, I'll definitely be there at that show. It should be fun. That's so cool. It's, it, again, here's another experience you're having because of cards. You're going to L.A. And it's, it's just, it's awesome. So when you go, so, okay, you have this show coming up, but do you go to other, like, local card shows, or is it just, like, big card shows for you? Unfortunately, New York doesn't have the best card shows. Uh, we have, so cringe, we have something called the East Coast National. Austra. Austra. I went there, I'm like, bro, oh, this is not it. Um, it's good. I, I like seeing the people. I bump into um, uh, uh, Cage. You know, and his son all the time. They're they're regular regular folks at the Hofstra. You know, you see random people. It's it's fun, but it's not like it, I don't know. It's just not exciting. Maybe it's because it's in your own city, but it's still just not good. Like I I like traveling to like the other shows. It's just more exciting. I feel like, and, and like the well known dealers are there. So he just poppy. I feel like we go to so many shows. And of all different varieties, you know, you have the, like the small local shows with the same, you know, like 40, 50 guys that have been doing them for like 122 years. 
and they're still alive and they're still doing it and then you have like the newer shows like we have a bunch of like young guys that are like setting up new shows and they're like hyped about it i think like my so my son the first real card show that he had ever gone to was the national (laughs) so every card show after that has been like sort of like "Mm." what the hell is this (laughs) like this isn't the national mom so when you like when you're in a card show versus like when you go to the national do you think that the national is like the mood at the national is determined more by like where the hobby's at and like even in these smaller shows or do you think that like the national and the mood at these shows is kind of setting the the tone of the hobby because those are like the in-person deals it's where face-to-face stuff it's not just everyone talking crap online it's like what's happening in real life okay it's a great uh question um a critical thinking question <laughs> um so i would take the, the other version so basically like the national does that the mode of the hot mood or mode of, of mood uh, of the hobby more the other way around the people so like everybody's all sad depressed my car price so low oh my god oh my god you know what i mean the vibes are going to kind of reflect, generally speaking. You know, good times, all good times, bad times, bad times. But the, the, the national does at least always up, uplifts. So if it's good, it's going to be great, like amazing. If it's like even softer, tougher market, the national still brings that joy and uplifting vibe. It always has a positive type of uh, market feeling from, from, from what I know if I had to answer that. So I think the people set the mood. But then the venue of the national just, uh, you know, exuberates everything to like a more positive uh, level. That, that's how I had to uh, say. I always feel after we leave the national that I'm like, yes, cards. Oh, I'm so back into it. You know, like even if it, you're like, and summer's hard too because you know, I'm not that for everyone, but we have kids and and we live in Michigan where it's like cold like 97 percent of the time. So we have like a little bit of like four weeks where it's like really warm and we can enjoy ourselves and go outside. So even as someone like me, who's like really ensconced in the hobby, summer, I like, I'm like, meh on cards because I just want to like enjoy vitamin D while I don't have, um, you know, seasonal depressive disorder. So I think a lot of people like, you know, the nationals towards the end, like, you know, we only have a couple weeks of summer left. It's like, end, like mid end summer. So then all of a sudden you're starting to get into, you know, football and baseball playoffs and basketball is coming back and everybody's like getting you know, excited again, you, you know, so I think when I, when I go to the national and then I, and you're around everybody, that's a good way to like, I almost feel like that's the kickoff of the, the hobby year. Okay. Uh, when you guys came back from the national, how'd you guys feel? Sick. I was sick. I, di- <laughs> I was like mostly dead. Um, okay. I was, I am alive again. So I might be a zombie because I'm pretty sure I died. Okay, um, <laughs> you fucked them up with that one. No, no we came back. We were we were uh, excited. It was it was a great experience. I'm sorry for the health issues, like many others, but um, in terms of imagine you didn't get sick. You, you, you're normal. Uh, how, what are your thoughts and feelings after coming back for the national? Not- I went to a trade night where they had to close the doors because it was so packed full of people trying to get in that the fire marshal shut it. Wait, so there at. Uh, card collector two and Kennedy right. Roadshow. It was close. They, they, they said post national. We came back. There was a, there was a huge buzz. We, that, we're excited. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way to deny that people. But are that still. was Shay's question, Courtney. This is the Shay show. You answer his question accordingly, oh, or you don't answer at all. I was saying, like, people. Anyone who's saying like the hobby's dead or whatever, you don't. I've never been to a trade night where the fire marshal had to close it. So that gives me like that feeling when I leave. Like everyone is still in this. You know, that's how I felt when I left. Okay, so like uh, uh, positive, excited, nothing, you know? Okay, cool. No, okay, so from a card perspective, that's how we felt. Now, when you go there, there are some tricky waters you have to navigate because there is a lot of partnerships and there's a lot of lines in the sand. And so when you're trying to be neutral and just buy and sell cards and be friendly with people, that does become awkward, especially the longer you're in the hobby and you get to know who's with who and who and those things are. So that stuff, not so cool. We talking about like a little bit of like the, some of the politics that goes on, uh, like uh, yeah. association, people, all that. Okay. Yeah. 
interesting. Um, I, I, I know where you're coming from. Um, I can see that happening. Um, luckily, I haven't fully experienced it in, in that strong level where I, I, I've heard stories about people getting not blacklisted, but blocked off almost at, or getting access to certain cards. This is like a whole different, you know, like yeah. those type of we stuff. We don't play in that ballpark. <laughs> no, no, no. But, no, a lot of crazy shit that goes on in, in this space, you know. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the personalities and the dynamics because I measure like economics, right? So like I'm always looking at like, hmm, okay, like I'm always like, observing stuff because I just find it interesting compared to like any other hobby or job. Like I, I just think like this space is like so unique. Um, and it requires so much critical thinking. Like when you guys were buying that Jordan, you probably like got to make decisions, you know, like financial decisions, life decisions, you know, pick and choose which cards. So like, there's a lot of goals behind it. That's, 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 that's why uh, I, I like the space a lot. Let me ask you this. You've been in the space for a long time. You marched to the beat of your own drum. You are uniquely Shay. If you could make one change that would improve the hobby, what would that be? I know, I know, I saw that question. I should have thought about it. Um, wait, in, in, in just in general, I mean, oh God, more. I guess it's, as corny as it sounds, like more inclusion, more positivity, more equal opportunities, um, just things like like in that realm and in that sense. Um, if I if I had to, and and like you know, not judging a book by its cover, stuff like that, like. Trust me, I, I've, I, I've met, like, these guys that have, like, for example, like, long story, like a guy that had a LeBron RPA, right? And it, and it, you know what that, obviously, that's a million-dollar card. The guy had it in his briefcase, the last national. Plain Jane guy, very, very regular-looking guy, older gentleman. I keep saying gentleman all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he was very polite, obviously. Very yeah. nice. Very good <laughs> Don't mention, you know, like regular, and then he was walking, he went to like a booth, like treated him like shit, you know what I mean? He, he was asking for like a pretty big car, you know, then, you know, my bro, my bro, my man, Mr. Gentleman, oh, uh, you know, took off the case, started showing, and then he, and then everything changed. He was like, we, we, he was talking to me, he told me that story. I was like, holy shit, you have like some, who are you? I, I, I just found out about him. I told him, dude, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these are some wild, wild stuff. And he told me, for like liking my collection blah blah and we, we became like you know pretty pretty decent good, good friends so like things like that it's just unnecessary you know that's why like i, I look at everybody the same free and equally you know what i mean so i i i guess that sense because i know i may come off a little you know uh extra but um You're don't, perfect. don't judge me i guess <laughs> i think that is a huge point a huge you're so right with the judging people without that was like when, when back in the old days when you're doing sales it's like don't judge what somebody is capable of based on the way that they dress or the way they carry themselves because you have no idea you have no idea about these people and i think in general sometimes at these shows you get some of these longtime dealers and they have completely forgotten the art of like selling not only their cards but themselves and like part of that is being friendly and open jeremy when we set up at shows, he, our kids come with us and he's like, nobody sits, everybody smiles. You talk to the people when they come up. You're not on your phone. You act engaged. You're polite to every single person that walks up and speaks to you. Because that's just like, it's just good etiquette as a human. And yeah. it would not, it'd be nice to see some more just like niceness. I agree with you. It's also like, because you talk about anxiety, we human beings feel anxiety, they feel anxious. And it's a lot easier to interact with somebody when they're warm and kind and you feel like you can approach them. And that's probably why we became, you know, Instagram close with you because we'd shoot a message and you wouldn't like treat us like shit. Like you talked to us like we were normal people. And then like we went back and forth and I'm sure there's a lot of people because that's, that's the type of people that we're attracted to in the hobby, not the standoffish, snobby people who are better than everybody, but people who are genuine. Genuine. Yeah, I mean, um, so everything, everything you guys said and we said, hundred percent true. <clears throat> so, like, just to you know, have a little fun. I low key like <clears throat> being looked at, being judged by the cover because <laughs> at the national soccer trade night, this guy had a Lewis Hamilton card. I think he won, I think like ten or fifteen thousand. I, I can't remember. 
I was like, oh, can I see that? He was joking around. You got hand sanitizer, you know? He actually told me you got hand sanitizer because you know, it's like a big car, you know? I was like, yeah, but would you maybe, I don't know, would you want to trade? I passed him the two, you know, he shook, calmed down. I was like, bro, we're all just having fun here. Man. What? You know what I mean? So I like just, like, just, just coming back, like, fo like making fun in, in the whole situation, bro. Like, you know, like, that's how you get him back instantly, like, with this type of situation. And then he'll probably remember that. And next thing, in the going forward, he'll probably not treat people that way because he'll probably remember this experience because he probably saw cards that he didn't expect me to have. You know what I mean? And you just show it. So, like, it, that was, that's how I try to have fun in, in the, with those people. Uh, it's just a side story. No, I think that's right. Someone in the comments said 100%. I, I, I didn't see who the name was, but it was a good point. They said the second that you um, pull out a big card, the way people treat you instantly changes. And, and I don't think it should take a big card for people to just treat each other nicely. Yeah. I, like one of my favorite, favorite thing is looking at uh, collections of collectors that are very player focused specifically. Like I think I posted to one guy that I think, what was it? Like he was a Scotty Pippen, like some some weird some weird random players. I know that of him is not weird, but like Stefan Marbury or something, super collector. I'm like, wow. Like, you like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, those people, like, you know, I always admired them and like, just from the passion and like their seriousness. I was like, dude, like, I want to know how, how else, how'd you approach into thinking this way? Like, I want to pick your brain. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm more excited to kind of talk to you. I'm like, what's up? Like, I enjoy that stuff. I think that's cool. I love the education piece too. You talk to people and understand what, why they do it, how they look at it, how they interact or navigate it, and you pull from it what you like. Oh, the, the Dresden, that, that's awesome. That guy was a, a beast too, by the way. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, he, he, was, he, was, he was a stud. Let me ask you this. A wild first eight months of this year. You know, we're at the beginning of August. What do you expect to see for Shea and Empire and what you guys are working on in the next, you know, four to six months? Like, what, what's a realistic ex expectation? And what is, like, what would be just, like, the, the grand slam, like, the home run uh, for, for you? Because, I mean, you got super fractors. You've traveled across the world. You know, we've talked about you're going to the moon at some point. You're going to be the first one to do a deal in space. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to give Empire the Amex and tell them, you know, just get me up to the moon, get with Bezos, don't wake me up before 3 p.m., and we'll, we'll do the deal. That's funny. He may have a higher – there's no limit, but I think he has a higher charge limit over me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Um, but um, what, what's out there? So, like, look, obviously beyond blessed to, like, have these cards, the whole situation, um, I, I think, like – that I've we've dealt with I've dealt with um even getting opportunities for some of these cards is I'm not gonna say like you have to be someone like like genuineness people like and these are collectors like I'm a collector myself so like they kind of like just kind of vibe with each other you know it wasn't it was business obviously but there's more to it like we, we wanted to go to a good home as corny as it sounds you know but there is a level of truth to that and I do believe that you know um, so like th th that's, that's so first of all, like beyond blood for all that stuff for the first eight months, it feels like, like three years, like, you know, it happened too fast, low key. Uh, what else out there? Um, there's going to be, I'm definitely going to be involved with like more media stuff. Uh, seems like I've been slacking on that. Um, but like how I, the only reason that I'm doing it as much, you know, what we talked about earlier, like when you're a dealer less social but then when you're not a dealer you're walking it's more social but i actually love both sides so the fact of balancing and i know if i add more media type like more consistent stuff kind of like for example what you guys are you know the hobby trade night and everybody has their uh media thing um it's gonna take away from like actually chasing and pursuing like cards and like trying to do like things like that so like it's just a matter of balancing it uh to, to, to be frank, so going for it, but media and, and, and bigger, like crazier cards or whatever. Are you going to set up in the next national, do you think? Or is that something that maybe you won't be doing again? Uh, that's a great question. Um, to be honest, as of now, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards maybe even, depending on what I have, to, to what my collection, um, what I have in, in generally speaking. 
So it's going to be based on that, I, I, I would say. But if it's available, then I, I would like to set up. But like, I definitely want to, like, be less involved with that. You know, balance it more. Like, this maybe one. hire someone to sell your cards for you. <laughs> like, get a booth and have a, an employee. I will tell you, setting up at a show is exhausting. So I like, even I think had we set, like, we watched the whole show, and I felt like we had set up because we were selling, selling, selling our cards. I didn't feel like going to parties at the end of the day. I was just going to go back to the hotel room and go to bed. I wanted yeah. to eat because I didn't eat all day at all. Because, like, you're living on granola bars and, like, bottles of $7 water. And then you just want to, I just wanted to go back to bed. No, no, I, I, I totally agree. So, like, setting up is a whole different vibe, but I definitely want to balance it more. Um, I, I think it could be done. Um, it's just a learning process and experience you know it's always extreme with me last time all social this time all table table <laughs> you have and to like, find that balance <laughs> yeah maybe the next one um yeah it'll, it'll, it'll be a lot different uh i i, I think yeah. is there another pod coming or anything like that i know you're talking about the social media uh yeah there there is there's something that's being worked on um you know me, like the whole my oh, my my stupid thesis of like not disappointing. Like I I I genuinely just don't like wasting time, people's time. Cause I think it's very valuable. So if I'm gonna like try to like put out something, I want like at least you have to get something out of it. Either some sort of facts, some sort of opinion, some like I want people to leave feeling something. I hate it. I like it. It's annoying. Something. That's when you know, just a content creator, you did something right. Generally speaking. So like, cause I do, I do value time. So like, uh, that's, 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 that's what I want to do. Um, probably start not a rant podcast, but, um, something along those lines, there's, there's some talks with some, 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 some people that's going to want to get involved and kind of like back end and stuff, um, just going like back and forth, but I know it's, it, it requires like commitment. So, um, and then once I'm committed to something, I'm not going to like, just not keep it. It's just, that's just not my principle. So. It's just going to require that that part. I think if you, a few times a week you just turned on a microphone and recorded whatever you were feeling for 15, 20 minutes and threw it out there, that it would <laughs> yeah. be it would be well received. I think you, I think you sell yourself short. I think a lot more people feel or can relate to you more so than the people that sometimes you're talking about, man. So don't sell yourself short. No, I, I appreciate it. What, what's funny is that all these people like they're always like they have a subscription they're selling they have a product that they're selling like something like buy this listen to this or card choice and advice i do none of that stuff if you know what i mean i'm just just talking about my experience and like i'm a commentator i guess right that's what you call it um so like that's that's what i do that's kind of like what i enjoy it just comes naturally so like you know people like it i guess they like it and a lot of people don't it's fine i'm just getting Trying to get a thicker skin. I, I guess that's uh, what I want to do, actually. Another thing, uh, have more thicker skin. Having thicker skin is, is that, that is. The internet's mean. The internet is mean. I will <laughs> tell you, don't feel like we, we don't sell anything the same as you. We just kind of get on here and we talk about things that we find interesting or, you know, <clears throat> we have, uh, when we went to the national, we found a lot of like small businesses that are doing things hobby related or hobby adjacent that we thought were cool. And so we invited them to come on to talk about what they're doing. We have, we are in no way being paid for that. We just thought what they were doing was cool. And I have, we have done, like we've done reviews for companies that like people ended up hating. So we tried them and by, tr just by trying them, you get like people coming on to your youtube and stuff and saying mean things about you because they don't like that company and they think because you're reviewing it you have some kind of connection to the company i like it was hard for me um in the beginning i've gotten better like i just that that's something over the last couple of years i feel like i've gotten better at is just like taking criticism and being like whatever i don't care what you say strange anonymous person online but um it was hard and it was hard because you're not necessarily the company, but people will take out their anger on whatever you're talking about on you because you're there. And that is, and people are mean. So I completely understand. And yeah, this, is a, this is a hobby, right? This is not how we pay our bills. This is for fun. And so because we have a little bit, a small amount of disposable income, we thought let's try shit. If it works, 
Let's share our successes. If it sucks, and there's been a lot of stuff that sucked or failed, let's share that too so somebody can learn from our mistake and just share what the hell's going on, man. I think it's too because we'll share like that it wasn't great, but in a, in a nice way because that's just the kind of people we are. I'm not going to come on here and be like, oh, this company's a, like garbage and trash and this is why we hate them. It's just like we would not use them again. And this was our, our actual experience and this is why we wouldn't. And I think sometimes that makes people mad too because we're not like just shredding someone. And I'm just, I'm not comfortable doing that as a person. Sometimes people are only happy when they get something to get mad <laughs> about. True. Yeah, there's, there's keyboard warriors. I mean, there's keyboard warriors, I guess. You know, what, do you, what do you call? I'm a voice warrior. I'm not a keyboard. I just voice it, right? So you call those voice warriors? You're just a warrior, <laughs> sir. You are a warrior. Because <laughs> people, people talk crazy stuff by typing, right? Keyboard. What do you call the people that show their face and say it? You're just, you're an actual warrior. You're not a pretend one. You're just out there doing the, like, the, you're, you're out there doing the Lord's work, sir. <laughs> oh, man, I, I, listen, it's, it's, it's just all fun. Um, I, I like to poke fun. Uh, by, by the way, guys, like, whoever's watching, like, I don't, like, take, don't take me that serious. Somewhat, a little serious. But, you know, like, I try to just, you know, bring light to a lot of, you know, interesting things that are going on and topics. So, that's Look. just... I just want to say this, man. We're rooting for you. I wish you and Empire nothing but the most success. It's awesome watching it. I hope you continue with those quick interview clips that you were doing. I wanted to mention that earlier. Those are always a blast. Yes. And, man, just keep doing your thing, man. Just know that you've got a couple of friends out here who will support any way possible. And, you know, we, we say goodnight to our kids. We, we read to them. We give them a hug and kiss. We tuck them in. And then we sit in bed and make sure Shay's okay at nighttime. Court, you're going to have to wait a minute. Get your hand off my thigh. Shay is talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, uh, I appreciate it. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for hopping on. And we look forward to seeing you, whether it's in Dallas or Chicago, Bleak, or wherever the case may be, man. But uh, congratulations on your success. And we wish you nothing but more. Uh, I appreciate for uh, having me on. And um, I, 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 <laughs> there you go. You win, <laughs> you win more fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Be well. All right, man. Have a good day. Thank you.